Okay, so I think we can start now. So welcome everybody to this uh, short webinar about the Marie Curie postdoctoral fellowship at India Materials. So that's the agenda for today. First of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Germán Infante. I'm head of the project management office at India Materials. And I will talk a little bit about our institute, the hosting offers we have for call 2023 of the Marie Curie postdoctoral fellowships, and also the support services we provide to uh, candidates and later fellows at the proposal preparation and then at the project execution for those successful. Then my colleague Rosa, uh, who is the human resources manager at India Materials, will explain to you some other su support services. And then the most interesting part will be to hear the experience of a couple of our current uh, Marie Curie fellows, Valentin Vasilev uh, and Miguel Vázquez, who will explain their experience well, working with us and being a Marie Curie fellow. And then, then we will have a, a, Q, a, a, Q, a question and answer session. So if you have any questions, please use the Q&A uh, feature of Zoom and we will address those questions at the end, okay? So let's begin. So we, our institute, it's uh, located in Getafe, which is a town uh, about 15 kilometers to the south of Madrid. And for those of you who don't know Madrid, Madrid is right in the center of Spain. It's the biggest city in Spain, well, really touristic and besides the city who has a lot of cultural things to do also we have the mountains close by nice parks nice bars lo lots of things to do here museums etc so our institute is part of the imdea network uh, those are seven research uh, institutes in different areas and in total around 800 researchers work at those institutes. Around half of them are uh, foreign nationals. So it is our, our working environment is quite international compared to our uh, neighbors and, and, and our country, I think. So in total, we executed around 600 projects in 2021, around 35% of them funded by the European Union, such as the Marie Curie actions. Uh, in total, our institutes have been awarded 12 ERC grants, which, as you may know, are the most prestigious uh, fellowships in, in Europe for really like top researchers. And three of our institutes are recognized by our government as one of the best research uh, centers in Spain, including us, we have a seal of excellence that in principle is a sign that we are a good working institution, okay? So now uh, let's talk a little bit more about us in the materials. So our mission is to do a research of excellence at the front, at the forefront of material science and engineering and contributing to tackle the Society, society's challenges and fostering the sustainable development of our region. So we are based in three pillars, excellent science, attraction of talented researchers such as uh, yourselves. And finally, we try to do a technology transfer of our results to industry so that they are used. So we are a small medium-sized research center around 100 researchers for 23 countries and nearly 60 percent of them are foreign nationals so we are organized into 16 uh, research groups each of them uh, headed by a principal investigator and we have a number of postdoctoral fellowships pre uh, so, sorry postdoctoral researchers predoctoral researchers laboratory technicians instrument scientists and people such as me 
who provide support to all, all those people. We have uh, nearly 3,000 square meters of research laboratories to manufacture, characterize, and model advanced materials and nanomaterials, including their integration into lab scale prototypes. You can see there are some pictures. And we have a big space. You can see that on the right. And well, I think we are pretty well equipped for doing the science that we do. We are or our 16 research groups are organized into four research programs novel, about novel materials, integrated computational materials engineering, the multi-scale characterization of materials and processes, and advanced manufacturing. In, in a way that uh, usually each research group is involved in more than one of those programs. And in all of them, we try to collaborate with industrial partners, such as the one you see in that picture. For example, ITP Aero, who is an engine, our aircraft engine manufacturer, Airbus, Excel, manufacturers of CD printers, uh, steel manufacturers, etc. And in the end, we try to orient our research lines to tackle the, as much as we can, uh, global challenges and sustainability. So now moving to the hosting offers we have for the current call of the Marie Curie postdoctoral fellowships, we have the following 11 offers. You can find more details in our website. And the way, if you are, if you are interested in one of them, the way to proceed is just send uh, your CV plus a very brief outline of your proposed research project to the principal investigator in charge so that uh, you two can begin a conversation and in, if in the end you both agree to submit a proposal, we, we will start working together, okay? So I will go very briefly through those 11 hosting offers because you have the full details in our website, okay? So our colleague Damien Touré uh, wants to attract someone modeling the microstructure the evolution of materials degradation in metals and alloys. Then our colleague Deji Wang is looking for candidates uh, interested in high performance polymers. Uh, Federico Sket, who works on X-ray, wants to attract somebody interested in, in the development of X-ray imaging using laboratory and synchrotron radiation. This uh, particular hosting offer is a collaboration with the German Aerospace Center and the, and the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility. Um, our colleague Jennifer Patterson, who is head of our group on regenerative medicine, is working of candidates in the field. Then Javier Jorca, who is our scientific director, has a couple of offers. One of them to work on 3D, on 3D printing of a scaffold for osteochondrial tissue, and another one very different related to first principle calculation of nickel cobalt chromium phase diagrams. Johan, who is uh, the, who just joined the institute, is looking for people interested in metamaterials. Uh, so related to sound and our colleague Masiek uh, wants to attract candidates in data-driven discovery of functional materials and we are reaching the end so our colleague Serjan and Ignacio wants to are interested in proposals related to modeling and experiments of the recycling process of low quality steel scrap and our director Jose Manuel Torralba uh, wants people with interest in materials development using powder metallurgy as, as the core technology. And I think that's the last one. Carlos Garcia, who is an expert on, on composites, wants to attract uh, people interested in the 3D printing of high performance structural polymers using uh, a combination of artificial intelligence and virtual 
processing, which is, uh, well, uh, quite, all of them are, I think, are quite hot topics these days. So you know better than me. So after that, let me explain to you the support services we will provide uh, both at the pre-award and post-award uh, phases, okay? So the deadline for the Marie Slodowska Curie Actions this year is the 13th of September. So before that, as I said, the idea is that candidates and supervisors agree to submit a proposal. Once they agree to do that, they inform us at the project management office. And what we do is that we appoint a project manager to each proposal to support the application. Then the candidate and the supervisor receive a detailed instructions about the call plus a handbook, which is a guide to write the, the technical proposal. And on top of that, the project manager will uh, carry out a review of each proposal before submission. Then you will have to wait till February 2024 to get the results. And if successful, we will appoint the same person on a different one to monitor each project and help with the grant agreement uh, preparation, which is basically to sign the contract with the funding agency. And then our colleagues, Rosa Bazan and others from Human Resources will begin to support uh, the fellow uh, sending housing, etc. cetera. Well, Rosa is going to talk about that later. And then the project will start approximately around April, between April and September 2025. These fellowships are very flexible, so there is a like a very large uh, period of time where you can join there or another institution. So during that phase, uh, the, the, the task is to carry out the project and we will also be helping you. So the idea is that the supervisor at INDEA monitors the, the fellow daily work and provides career guidance. Then the project manager at the project management office will take care of the financial and administrative management of the grant. And he or she will also provide guidance for the technical deliverables, reports, and other aspects of the project. And we will also invite the fellows to join the communication and outreach activities we regularly do, which, as you may know, are, are part of these uh, grants. And we will also invite you to join a, a training plan in transferable or soft skills that we regularly do and other, other type of activities. And finally, the support, obviously, from our human resources department will uh, continue. Well, I think that's it from my side. So, Rosa, you can continue. Okay, one second. I'm going to share my presentation. Can you see my presentation? Okay. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name, as Herman mentioned, uh, is Rosa, and I am the HR manager of India Materials Institute. And I'm going to tell you about the services we provide to newcomers to ensure that the experience of moving to Spain is as easy and stress-free as possible. As my colleague Herman mentioned, we are a research institute uh, focused on the generation of excellent science, technology transfer to industry and society, and to attracting and retaining, retaining talent all over the world. So in my presentation, I'm going to focus on the talent attraction part. And I will explain some of the things that I consider that are more relevant uh, for you, but you can ask me about any issue that you consider important or that you are curious about. Okay. Uh, one second. So this is what we talk when we talk about soft landing services. And you can see there are three blocks of things that we take into consideration. One is related to 
relocation and bureaucracy, the other is related to, to the job itself, and the last one is related to moving to a new, new country. So some things will happen before you arrive, and some things uh, will, uh, will happen after you, you arrive. Um, we will uh, also take into consideration that you are new to the job, and this will cover both the formalities uh, and the welcoming and the engagement part. And then we also take into consideration that you are in a new country and we will try to make your life easier here. Um, Herman has uh, shared some of the figures. And as you have seen, we are a multicultural institution with uh, 100 researchers, half of them international researchers from more than 20 different nationalities. So regarding the support we provide, our philosophy is open door and flexible. We try to help everyone according to their needs. So there are a series of things, uh, steps that are common to everyone, like obtaining the residence permit or registering at the municipality, open a bank account, etc. But we can also help with other issues related to moving to Spain that will be specific to, to each uh, researcher. Like if you come with your family, we can provide help with and support to help you uh, with the schooling. If you want, if you get married, we will uh, tell you the bureaucracy of that in Spain. Um, if you want to validate your driving license, we can provide support with that. So any issue that a researcher brings us, we try to help as much as we as we can. So and we are concerned not only about the issues that arise at the arrival, but any issue that might might arise during your appointment. As you can see, we have the HR Excellence in Research, which is an award granted by the European Commitment, and it shows our continued commitment to good HR practices. We have the logo since 2015, so almost eight years now. And in addition, uh, many of our ex uh, researchers have had the experience of living and researching in another country. So I think that makes for a very worky, welcoming working environment. And it will make it easy for you, if you decide to join us and get the Marie Curie Fellowship, to find someone to share your experiences with and maybe someone that can help you with the with what you need. So it's not only the support that HR or projects can bring, but also the colleagues that you will have. I'm going to go very briefly through the residence permit application process so you know the basics. Uh, once the appointment is confirmed, we will apply for a residence permit under a specific law for researchers. It's a three-step step process. The initial application is done by the Institute, by INDEA, and then you have to apply uh, for the visa to travel to Spain at the consul, Spanish consulate of the country where you are living. And then you enter Spain, you get the stamp in your passport, and then that's it. Uh, the application can be done from outside of Spain, which is generally what is done, how it's done, or it can be done while you are in Spain. If you are in Spain, the last two steps, steps this application enters to Spain, is taken out of the equation, so it's a faster process. It usually takes between one, one, it takes one month to get the residence permit, and then between one month and two months to get the visa permit. So in total, uh, three months to be able to travel and start working in Spain. The duration of the residence permit is the same as the contract with a maximum duration of two years, and it can be renewed as many times as needed. Family members, you can bring your family members together with you, a spouse and children. And you can do that, we can do that at, this, at the same time as you or at a later stage. And it will provide access, full access to the labor market. Okay, and this specific type of uh, residence permit uh, allows uh, for a one year extension to search for a job in Spain. So during one additional year, you can stay in Spain to try to find a job. Okay, so as you can see, well, these are some of the things that you will need to do after you arrive to Spain, register at the municipality, get your Spanish identification card, your health card, open the bank account. And for all these procedures, uh, that are time consuming and can be co uh, complex if you are not uh, Spanish, uh, you will get support and we will try to help as much as possible to make these things easier. Uh, the Institute uh, is in Getafe, as uh, Germán mentioned, 
and it takes about 45 minutes to arrive in public transport from the center of Madrid. So when you are thinking about uh, accommodation, you should take this into consideration. There is a dedicated person at India Materials, Mariana, uh, that will help you with finding accommodation and uh, um, having the utilities and internet and everything. So I've put also a few uh, quantities so that you know the cost of living in Spain. The net salary for a Marie Curie fellow is around 3,000 euros per month. So around between 30 and 40% will go towards uh, the cost of the basic cost of living. Okay. Um, and then, well, if you have any questions regarding that, you can ask later. Regarding social security, you will be uh, fully covered since the day one of your uh, work contract, and it will cover you and your family. Additionally, Spanish uh, social security covers uh, temporary disability and, and parental leave. Okay. Okay, I just wanted, uh, with this slide, I just wanted to show you that there is a, a full team uh, that will provide support uh, with you uh, in different issues like HR, we will make sure that you have your contract and you do your paperwork, you will have uh, the IT people making sure that you have your credentials, your computers, and well, basically that you have all the information and training you need to start working. And this is the team that will make sure that you have everything that you need and answer the questions that you might have. Okay, sorry, the middle. Okay. For me, this is one of the key aspects to ensure a soft landing and a good integration. Uh, as you can see, uh, last year in April 2022, we did a survey that included some engagement questions. Um, and I wanted to share this specific one uh, so that you see that what I say that the working atmosphere at the Institute is very good. It's not only me that thinks that. Also 93% of uh, people working at the Institute would recommend it as a great place to, to work. So welcoming and engagement starts with your research group where your supervisor will introduce you to your teammates and show you around. And he or she will also meet with you during the first week to talk about your future work, work at India. Although maybe in your case, you will already uh, have discussed it while you were preparing your proposal. We also organize many social activities. We organize the in their days where we go for a day trip or we organize an activity, canoeing, we went to an adventure park one year. We also have in their family days where you can bring your families and we organize activities for them. So they have the opportunity, uh, you have the opportunity to, sh to show them where you work and, and what you do. Uh, we also organize Christmas dinners, a multicultural lunch. We have a paddle tournament, which is a sport similar to, to tennis. If you're not Spanish, you might not know it. And we promote the participation in races. We have a ping pong table. We do as many activities. We really want to make sure that you have the opportunity to socialize with, with other colleagues because we believe that will be important for, for your adaptation to, to, to your work here. We also provide support and, and help it with dissemination and outreach activities. We think it is important to promote the interaction with the general public and show what you do. And also, I believe it's part of your commitment when you receive a, a Marie Curie Fellowship. Career development is also essential. You are going to be here for a limited period of time, and then most researchers are going to move to another position. So we want to make sure that you get the most of your experience at India. We have languages classes. Uh, we also organize regular training in transversal skills, as Herman mentioned, around different age areas. Uh, some of them are specific to career development, but also to entrepreneurial skills, IPR issues, public engagement, communication. Uh, we also organize internal hands-on workshops on more technical topics. You can see there some of the, the last ones that we have organized. 
and you will have access to, to many internal lectures and seminars that we organize on scientific topics. So we try that the, that the training uh, that you have while you are here is quite uh, comprehensive. Okay, and well, continuing with career development, uh, as, as you know, you will need to prepare your career development plan and follow it with the, with the support of your uh, supervisor. And we think that this is a critical issue. Um, and there is research that shows that people who develop and implement strategies to pursue specific career uh, goals achieve greater success. So we really encourage uh, that. And I want to finish mentioning some of our alumni. As you can see, some of them have continued their academic career in prestigious uh, institution, but also some of them have moved to industry, also to prestigious institutions. So we continue the collaboration with some of them and we are proud of, of their future uh, careers. So this is all from my side. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you. And so now I'm going to introduce the next, next speaker, with, who is my colleague, Valentin Vasilev. Vasilev has, uh, Valentin has joined us very, very recently in January 2023 and has started his Marie Curie Fellowship in April. Valentin, the floor is yours. Thank you. I will share now the screen. So, uh, wait, yep. Okay, uh, do you see my, my screen? So, well, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for being here today. I hope uh, this uh, workshop well, or this seminar is very useful for you in order to, to take a decision re with respect to applying for a Marie Curie postdoctoral fellow with us. Uh, well, as Rosa mentioned, uh, my name is uh, Valentin Basilev. Uh, I just started working at IMDEA, in, in, at IMDEA January this year, and my uh, uh, Marie Curie Fellowship started uh, in April, so I have been working on it uh, for uh, two months. And well, uh, today I will start uh, presenting a little bit of myself, so I hope you can relate uh, my, st my, my, my story with uh, your research career. So you can find maybe some things that are common and you can feel more confident about applying to the Marie Curie Fellowship. So, well, uh, I, I have done uh, different things uh, while studying in my life. So I started doing a chemical engineering uh, bachelor degree. Then I moved to more theoretical work uh, by studying a physical chemistry master of science. And finally, I moved uh, to do a PhD in physics. And well, I have worked in different uh, countries with different, of course, multicultural environments. And this, of course, uh, enrich, uh, make more rich uh, the experience that one has, not only in research, but also in life. I have worked in Mexico, which is my home country. Uh, also, I studied in Germany. Uh, I did my PhD in Luxembourg. And finally, I'm working now here in Spain with the Marie Curie uh, Postdoctoral Fellowship. And with all my experience, I have uh, three main uh, topics where I work with, or with, let's say that I have uh, experience on, which is, of course, chemical engineering. And then I'm more focused my research on, in computational chemistry, and more recently in a uh, combining machine learning and other artificial intelligence tools uh, to improve the research in computational chemistry. So uh, with all this expertise, well, I, I defined this project with the people in IMDEA, uh, which is called High Hydrogen Machine Le uh, ML. And this project, well, uh, it's about uh, the hydrogen economy. So, uh, well, generating energy from hydrogen. So we have two main, uh, reactions, which is the hydrogen evolution reaction, which is the production of hydrogen, and the oxygen reduction reaction, which is uh, the uh, reaction that in the end generates the energy. What is the problem with these reactions? That we require, uh, uh, they are, the kinetics of these reactions are very slow, so for them to happen, we require catalysts. And the problem with, the, with this catalyst is that only platinum, or well, Platinum is the, is the best catalyst that we have for uh, performing these two reactions. And as you may know, platinum is very expensive. 
So we really need in order to improve or to make feasible the hydrogen economy or the use of hydrogen for generating energy, we need to search for efficient, cheap, durable, and non-toxic catalysts that can replace platinum for uh, the hydrogen evolution reaction and the oxygen reduction reaction, because this is of dramatic importance if we really want to change the energy consumption of our society to the hydrogen economy. So uh, for this project, I use two of my main expertises, which are computational chemistry and machine learning. And the idea is to use these tools in order to discover new catalysts for the hydrogen economy. Uh, as I mentioned you before, I just started this, uh, this project uh, in April. So I will only show you more or less what are the, the steps that we want to take in this project, because of course, we don't have yet uh, results to show. Uh, but well, uh, in this case, we have four main uh, steps in this project. The first one is, of course, to uh, gather the data set for training a machine learning model. And this is done with computational chemistry. Mainly, we do density functional theory calculations uh, to obtain the catalytic data. Either could be the absorption energies or the uh, catalytic activities. Then we are going to construct machine learning models that are able to predict these catalytic uh, properties. And finally, we can use this machine learning model to screen a huge list of different compounds in order to find which of them are the most promising candidates for uh, uh, substituting platinum in the hydrogen economy. And then, of course, once we have some of the candidates from the machine learning model, we are going to validate them with uh, further uh, computational chemistry calculations. And then the few or or lot candidates that we have, we're going to provide them to our uh, experimental colleagues in order uh, for them to uh, try to synthesize them and actually find that uh, if these catalysts are as good as our uh, theoretical methods uh, will say. So now, uh, once you define your project uh, or I define my project, uh, why to choose IMDEA materials? Well, you will find uh, a lot of uh, common things of what I am saying and what Rosa and Herman said, tell you before. For instance, one of the main things uh, I consider important for me to choose in the materials because it's a, a research institute of excellence, not only in Spain, but also in Europe, as you, uh, as you can confirm by the numbers that uh, or the figures that Herman showed you about how many projects uh, and funding uh, the institute receives. So this is a good, uh, let's say, uh, place uh, to work and for you to, to improve uh, the funding and the, the deployment of your project. Another thing is also the industrial collaborators, because in the end, uh, there are two paths that you might want to take as researcher. One is, of course, continuing academia and doing research uh, in universities or in, or in research institutes as in, as in their materials. But another option, of course, is if you want to change your path and work in, uh, in industry. And as you uh, know, there are uh, many industrial collaborators of India, not only in Spain, but also international collaborators. So this, of course, increases your chances of, uh, of future uh, jobs uh, that you might uh, want. And the last uh, thing is uh, the multidisciplinary research environment that uh, you can find here in IMDEA. For me, this is very interesting because uh, for me, it's the opportunity to work not only in the topics that I used to work before coming here, but actually to expand my knowledge and also to uh, understand how other people do research or how or which types of research other people uh, do. For instance, here I show you some examples. There is the biochemomechanics of materials group. There is also multi-scale materials modeling. Both of them uh, have theoretical work, but also there are uh, groups that uh, have experimental work like the biomaterials and regenerative medicine or the nanomechanics and micromechanics group. So you can see for these few examples that there is a broad uh, research topics in which you can work or you can engage in different uh, research uh, uh, projects. Then uh, another part of coming here to MDEA is what you will find when you come here. I don't have a slide for that because let's say it's more abstract. It's about what you will feel or what you will, or what people will uh, make you feel once you arrive. Uh, Spanish people are very warm, so you will not feel alone even if you don't know anyone. Even if you don't speak Spanish, you will find people to talk with. And uh, this is a, an amazing environment. Also, uh, the uh, one thing that is linked to this multidisciplinary research is that you will have a lot of uh, very good colleagues. 
and you can engage yourself uh, in different activities and to learn new things that you might not know uh, from before. And I think this is something that is very, very important of working here in IMDEA. Then uh, another important part that is linked to uh, what you will need to write or what you will need to understand from your project once you apply to the Marie Curie postdoctoral fellow is how not only the, the institution or your research group will, uh, will increase your capabilities as researchers, but also which things you are going to provide to them. So it's somehow the way, this is called the two-way transfer of knowledge. And well, my research group is the biochemomechanics of materials that is led by Professor Javier Jorca. Uh, and the main uh, goal of this uh, research group is to develop uh, new materials for engineering applications in transport, energy, and health. And this is done by uh, finding and understanding the structure and property relationships in materials. And uh, this is done by using different uh, strategies. One is computational tools, which is uh, where my expertise falls. Also, you have uh, the in situ and in operando characterization and multi-scale modeling. So you can see here that since we have this broad, uh, I mean, this broad uh, techniques or strategies to, to, uh, to achieve the same goal, if, if you're experimentalist, you will have the chance to work with theoretical people, so you will learn new things. And in my case, I have the chance to work with amazing people that work in experimental uh, uh, research that allows me to learn more and to use my expertise in different topics that I have never done before. And finally, all of them, even though if we do different research, we aim to the same goal, which is to, in the end, have new materials that uh, can be manufactured with advanced processing techniques that are also available here at IMDEA materials. And then, well, of course, what I provide is my expertise, which is mainly computational chemistry and machine learning. And then, well, in this case, I, here I show you a few specific uh, uh, expertise that I provide to the group, like ab initio calculations, machine learning methods, and also their computational chemistry methods that can help to the main goal of our research group. And finally, is uh, also what the host institution provides. And this is linked to what Rosa just mentioned before, is, and is about the, the transferable skills, co uh, skills uh, courses, soft skills, and leadership skills, which in the end will help you to boost your, your career, either in research or in industry. So with that, I would like to, to thank you all for your attention. And I hope that you, in the end, decide to apply with us for a, for a Marie Curie Sladowska postdoctoral fellowship. And thank you. So now I think uh, I will give the, the space to, to my colleague, uh, Miguel Vasquez. Just, I will stop sharing. No, yeah, I think I, yeah. All right, thank you, uh, Valentin. Um, and thank you all for being here. So I'm gonna uh, give uh, you a little bit of my experience in, in their materials as a postdoctoral researcher of uh, Marie Curie Fellowship. So my name is Miguel Vasquez Pufleur. I joined about uh, one year and a half ago uh, the Marie Curie Fellowship, but I was here uh, about one year and a half before. So I just managed to apply just before the deadline for uh, staying on the country. Uh, so yeah, that's... Uh, uh, are you, uh, can you see my... Okay, uh, so my previous experience, uh, I, uh, I originally come from Mexico also. I studied in the University of Guadalajara, chemical engineering. Then I moved to the United States for doing a master's and a PhD at Washington University in St. Louis. Um, the focus was mainly on energy, environmental and chemical engineering. Then I moved to the University of Vienna for doing my first uh, postdoctoral uh, research stay. And then I moved to Indea Materials. Uh, so uh, my, my work so far uh, at Indea Materials includes the uh, construction and characterization of a spark discharge generator. 
So this instrument is essentially designed for making nanoparticles. We use a high voltage, um, high current. And this, uh, this is uh, how it looks when we operate at low pressure. This is the schematics of the, of the instrument. So we have uh, essentially a, a circuit. We um, cause a capacitor to charge. And then with uh, this high voltage, we manage to break down the air and make a spark in between electrodes, which uh, form nanoparticles. So it's pretty much the same as in a uh, spark plug in a car. But in our case, we want to erode the electrodes to make nanoparticles. In the car case, you just want to ignite uh, fuel. So same, same kind of concept, but different um, goal and application. And this is very useful for us for making nanoparticles of desirable um, conditions because it's very easy to, to tune the, the, um, the properties of the electronic components. So we can really just select a button, click, and boom, we get the nanoparticles. So in, in nano science, this is really an amazing tool to have. And that's something we developed here at Indea Materials. Uh, then we also have the, developed some reactors for making uh, one dimensional nanomaterials. Uh, those materials, for example, include uh, carbon nanotubes. Uh, and this is a reactor, a schematics of the reactor. So we have uh, evaporation of a um, catalyst, either directly by heating or with a spark discharge, which is the instrument that I just previously, previously described. And then these nanoparticles come into the reactor, which is a hot furnace. We add some other ingredients like promoters, to, for example, sulfur. And then we heat up the mixture and the nanoparticles uh, sinter. And then some of the precursors start to react on them. Like if it was a follicle, a hair follicle, and then a hair-like structure starts to emerge from them, which then uh, aerogelate and we can make a, a, a yarn and extract it uh, in a single step. Some of the examples of materials that we synthesize via this route include silicon carbide nanowires, carbon nanotubes, and silicon nanowires. Some of the most common applications of these materials are, for example, batteries. For the case of silicon nanowires, we also have a spin-off that uh, just uh, was founded about uh, two years ago that is trying to commercialize this uh, process. And now that is very uh, uh, important to have um, energy autonomy in Europe. Also carbon nanotubes, uh, we can make some fibers with some, some of the most outstanding material properties in terms of strength. Those materials can then be used, for example, for airplanes or for cars or for any application that requires high strength, low weight. And uh, the silicon carbide nanowire application uh, primarily is for high energy um, electronics. So we could have, uh, for example, transistors that operate in a, uh, engine or in a furnace without having to worry about the high temperature reaching the silicon part. Um, okay, so that's my work. And in the Marie Curie uh, Fellowship, you also have to um, uh, have a two-way transfer of uh, knowledge so from the researcher to the institute. There is many ways in, in which uh, we are uh, providing some knowledge. Some of it is mentoring younger colleagues, uh, which uh, may be writing some thesis at bachelor, master, or PhD level. So we provide some help based on our experience, international experience. Um, we also support other members of the group in terms of uh, collaboration, both formally and informally. And of course, uh, um, as the Institute gets um, larger and acquires more instruments, we also provide our key knowledge in specific uh, uh, instruments in order to acquire the most appropriate ones. In terms of um, knowledge that we get from the Institute, it's also, we're being mentored by more senior researchers. Um, we also have classes, are, as Rosa, Rosa was mentioning, on both soft and also hard skills from colleagues in the Institute, but also from experts in Madrid or even from other places. Uh, there is also outreach with uh, different segments of society, which we learn uh, by doing, for example, by participating in different affairs uh, or conferences. And there is, um, I mean, this, the project itself is also a great training because we are developing something uh, that is completely new in a top uh, institute. Um, so why in there? There is um, a lot of advantages that um, the previous speakers uh, were mentioning. I'm gonna give my own experience. So we have uh, here at there state-of-the-art uh, instruments. And it's not only a thing that is on paper. So we also have really like a proper access and availability. So we have, 
let's say the amount of instruments that we have per uh, the amount of people that uses them is is really high the time that we can get uh, out of it. So we have really direct access. We don't have to wait too long for getting access to these uh, very nice uh, characterization state of the art instruments. So just for, to mention some of them that I mainly use is like in microscopies, we have TM, SEM, FIF, on focal microscope. Spectroscopy, we have a, a Raman, XRD, wax, tomography, um, some other instruments for chemical characterizations. And uh, of course we have a more, much more in instruments which you can find in our website, which are all of them uh, pretty new and state of the art and uh, the most advanced available. Uh, we have also comprehensive uh, support from the research side. So the Institute is in general very collaborative, both uh, with um, members of the Institute, but also from outsiders, both from industry and academia. So uh, you can expect to get a lot of support, very um, individualized based on your needs, as Rosa was mentioning. So also the administration part is really helpful. So you have, you have a really support in all of, all of the aspects of uh, from starting your application to settling. And as things uh, may come up, then people in the administration, administrative side have been very useful for, for example, finding a house, opening a bank account, getting all of these uh, work permits. Uh, so yeah, you, it's, it's not only a thing on paper, you actually get the help uh, that you need in order to focus on your work. And um, you also get a very nice uh, training classes from uh, very specialized people. For example, we have uh, received some training for mocking interviews. So we actually got a Spanish uh, presenter who is like very famous in uh, science communication. And this person was training us on how we should actually uh, give an interview on TV. So that's something really, really helpful uh, that you can get in terms of soft skills. In terms of hard skills, we have also a lot of courses that um, involve sometimes internal researchers who are, for example, experts in simulation. So we got a, a workshop of two days of uh, how to uh, simulate using different programs uh, from actual people who are doing that. So I haven't seen this in other type of places. So that's something that really um, is a plus definitely on the Institute. Um, in terms of the integration, so yeah, of course, in Imedea, you can do great science, but it's also important to be able to feel well and have a, a proper life uh, while you stay here in Spain. So Spain, in terms of um, offerings, has a lot, a lot to, to give. There is a lot of uh, uh, history, gastronomy, tradition, and festivities. This picture is, uh, is in Madrid, in the cent cent city center. This is the Cibeles uh, Palace, and there is a very traditional festivity of bringing uh, lamb uh, uh, to the city capital. So it's really amazing. It's like several thousand, thousands of uh, ships just coming and walking through the streets. Something amazing to see. There is, of course, uh, festivities in every single uh, uh, province or uh, autonomical community of Madrid. This is uh, the Fallas of uh, Valencia, which is also a world known uh, event. And you can just find this in every single city and even in towns just happening all through the year. So it's really amazing some, uh, to see all these things. In terms of Madrid, well, it's one of the most vivid capitals of uh, Europe and the world. You have a lot of offerings in terms of museums, uh, culture, also nightlife is uh, perhaps one of the most vivid nightlifes that you can find. You have also uh, gastronomical offers that are also very, very tasty with tapas, famous tapas. Uh, also in the Institute in itself. So we have a lot of uh, events uh, organized all through the year. For example, we have the Christmas uh, uh, dinner and we have even the three uh, 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 kings coming to visit us and give us some, some gifts. Uh, so we also had some visits to um, a forest nearby. We have the mountains like uh, four kilometers away. You can reach them with public transportation. So it's really nice. And we went there for a day, uh, just hiking with all of the colleagues. And we are having our paddle tournament, which is actually tomorrow. And we're all hoping to win, uh, get the, the, uh, this uh, uh, trophy. So um, yeah, uh, to sum up, uh, India is just an amazing place to be. So I will highly recommend you to apply. I think you have a great support. You're gonna have a great chances to get your Marie Curie funded. And once you get it, 
I think you're going to have a great time here, both in terms of uh, research productivity, but also enjoying uh, socially the period of time that you stayed up in there. So thank you and join us. <clears throat> thank you, Miguel, Valentin, uh, and Rosa. Uh, I see no questions on the Q&A, but if any of you still has any question, just raise your hands and perhaps I can open your microphone. I mean... No questions? Well, I think in any case, if you decide to make contact with a potential supervisor and you agree to submit a proposal, there will be certainly some questions and uh, you can talk them or contact us at the, at the project management office during the application and so on. So if there are no questions, we can call it a day and thank you. Thank you all for attending and good luck if you finally apply either at India Materials or in another institution. Okay, so bye. Thank you, <laughs> goodbye. Thank you, bye. Thank you, goodbye.